Namaste. I'm Shreyoshi Day, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the second event of the 2021 Rasa Festival. For this festival, we have curated a rich tapestry of programs, and in a slightly different format from last year, we will bring them to you over several months, one to two events per month. It is a great pleasure and honor for us to present renowned artists from the US and India across a wide range of art forms, such as dance, music, theater, film, poetry, visual art, and photography. We are excited to present today's film event with three very thoughtfully made films curated by well-known filmmaker and professor of film at the University of Miami, Sanjeev Chatterjee. We are showing his silent film, On Cities 3, a non-verbal portrait of Mumbai with the music scored by Pandit Tanmay Bose. The second film is Ashpurdha or Audacity, made by Anirban Ban Roy, a multi-award winning independent director and writer based in Los Angeles, California. The third film is Machir Chol, a very interesting animated short film made by Abhishek Varma, an animation filmmaker based in Mumbai, co-founder of graphicshelf.com, an Indian comics and graphic novel repository, and a design educator. As you know, we made the films available to you ahead of time so that you can watch them at your convenience. We are delighted that you are joining us today for a stimulating discussion with the three filmmakers, moderated by Professor Swapnil Rai, faculty member in the Department of Film, Television and Media Studies at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Swapnil's research focuses on global film and television, media industries, women and gender studies, race and ethnicity, transnational stardom, and celebrity culture. In her prior experience as a journalist, writer, and editor, Swapnil has covered beats pertaining to cinema, art, and culture. I want to sincerely thank the three stellar filmmakers for sharing their very interesting films with us for our festival. My appreciation to Sanjeev for curating and to Swapnil for moderating this wonderful discussion with the filmmakers. Thanks also to the Ann Arbor District Library for partnering with us for the Rasa Festival, showing all our events and all their technical help. We look forward to seeing you next month for another Rasa Festival event. All right, so hello everyone. Um, and we are here today with some wonderful filmmakers, uh, Sanjeev Chatterjee, Ban Roy, and Abhishek Varma. And we'll be talking about um, the three short films that you've watched as part of the festival. So let me begin by asking each one of you to tell us a bit about your background and how did you get started in filmmaking? So let's begin with uh, Sanjeev, why don't you get us started? So uh, when I was a kid, I always thought that I was going to be a Bollywood star. And uh, then I went out of my like protected life in Patna, in Bihar, into the open world in Delhi, to Delhi University. And uh, many people don't really believe this, but I was for the first time introduced to the real India, as I see it, uh, because uh, of coursework, but less so, but experiences. So for example, uh, 
you know, a senior, uh, actually a graduate student was taking people to the Betla forest in Bihar for the first time. And uh, for me, for sure, to study or do a study of Project Tiger, which was a World Wildlife Fund f- funded. I'm like, oh, great. This is about tigers. And when I got there, I realized that it was really about people that uh, it was about saving the tiger at the cost of the lives of people who lived in the jungle and they they had been basically pushed out and given plots of land that were unviable to farm, so suddenly become farmers. And I don't want to go into details, we don't have enough time, but that was a terrible thing. I could see it as a young person. And I came back uh, from that experience and somebody said, you know what, stop trying to go to Bombay. If you feel that, you need to be a documentary filmmaker. So that's my beginning. Well, that's that's a very fascinating story. Um, how about you, uh, Anirban? How did you get started? Oh, you're really making me dig deep into my past. Uh, well, I just like Chadi uh, Sanjeev. I call him Chadi. Uh, we know each other for a while now. Um, I uh, went to Delhi University and, um, you know, I, at that point of time, my life was all about music, as you might see a bunch of guitars in the background. It still is, but in the background. Uh, yeah, I was in a bunch of bands. One of the bands you may have heard of, I uh, was one of the founding members of it called Indian Ocean. And... Uh, and I got kicked out of the band. And it's funny, I got kicked out of the band. And within one month, I came to the United States. Um, I came here to study films. Um, and, um, you know, my journey, my fascination with film started somewhere during my undergrad years. I had a, a roommate in the hostel of SRCC who just got me watching European films and things and just got me totally excited about a new way of storytelling. And that's how I started. And I came to film school and then, you know, one thing led to the other. Oh, that's that's great. Um, Abhishek, how about you? It seems that you have a technology background. I saw a lot of IIT credits in your animated shorts, do you? Uh, yes, uh, but I have studied uh, more of a, like an animation and art uh, from IIT. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as you asked about cinema, it uh, came through the listening to the radio. Uh, so in radio, what used to happen? Uh, uh, I am from uh, Hazari Bagh, Jharkhan, and uh, when I uh, left my place and went to the capital city of Jharkhand, that is Ranchi. There I had a radio and radio, everything was being narrated. Even the films uh, also, it was being played in a narration. Means I used to listen to the films. Uh, I can't see it. And it, uh, it got me a lot of fascination about uh, writing lyrics. Uh, uh, to be uh, like writing songs and uh, uh, writing a lot of conversations, you know. So this is my, this is like one of the very powerful thing and I came to know all about uh, there is a there is a film school called FTI in Pune. Then every Friday Saturday they used to bring all Bollywood artists and they used to say that okay if you come and struggle to Bombay, uh, then it life will become a struggle but it's worth it. So somehow. Um, Going and applying to IIT Bombay was that I want to see Bombay because I have never been there. So somehow it was related to cinema and eventually the radio, Bombay, IIT, everything happened and I got a chance to learn the craft 
and slowly still uh, continuing the craft and learning it every day and i think like in a short i think that is what it is yeah and and i have to say that i really enjoyed your <clears throat> animated short and the way that it's telling the story in a very nuanced way but also keeping it sort of open ended um and i have to i guess add that i am also from delhi i went to the university of delhi not very far from barns college i went to miranda house <laughs> <laughs> so all next right college so, over <laughs> next college over right yeah. and so um on that note i wanted to start with sanjeev's film because it gives us like broad strokes so um as i see it sanjeev your film is about life as you say particularly um i saw visions of lower middle class life in throes of the city so i was curious like why did you choose a spot boy from um the film industry as the character that bookended your piece like is there did you see some sort of symbolic meaning behind it so the film that you saw is part of a series that was i created for an event called on cities which was kind of i think the first prototype in my experience of a global event to talk about cities so it was it had a live audience of about 200 and then thousands online joined joined it and it was really a conversation about the past present and future of cities and i made four films one was of city of the past which was petra two cities of the present mumbai and sao paulo and uh, one city of the future masdar city in the middle east uh the the idea was to e- use these as in television language what we called interstitials for the conversation to proceed throughout the day of this on cities virtual event so what you saw was essentially one part of the four and uh, the event was tied along around the sdgs critically looking at the at th- at that time sustainable development goals uh, but it has changed since uh, to look at the things that we ignore in this idea of poverty for example in this film so poverty was at that time defined as anyone living under a dollar a day it's become different but at that time it was a dollar a day and they were poor so uh for me the film that you saw is really about space poverty mr pande the the main character has nothing like from a perspective of uh material things his kids go to a good school they have the devices that you use in a digital age that they use they seem to be happy from at least the film's perspective in terms of having a caring family uh they seem to be getting a good education uh but they can't afford anything more than a 10 by 10 chawl in bombay so it is really about space poverty not the definition of poverty by the standards of a dollar a day so that was the the, the intent of making that film and to take that particular conversation forward yeah okay well that that makes a lot of sense then cuz i noticed that things those things too and i also noticed something else that there are a lot of 
beautiful images um, and that show globalization in all uh, different ways. So you have used shots um, that are very interesting, but um, I also noticed that you've also used shots that typically the Western media uses to sort of stereotype India or this Indian city, such as garbage dumps on the street, uh, cows roaming on the street yet. Um, and I would want to kind of play a clip of that for our audience to have a sense for what I'm talking about. And I'll do that in a second. Um, but my question, and you can ponder over it while I play the clip is that um, they look different from a typical BBC shot that presents city life in India from a particular perspective. So, and yours looks very different, even though you say you use the same thing. So what was your vision when you chose to film those things? And do you think that they are imbued with a post-colonial perspective and meaning? So let me just uh, play the clip real quick. <laughs> So, yeah, would you care to um, elaborate on um, if you had sort of any um, post-colonial meaning that you were thinking? Because the way that we see you did pick the same objects, like the dumpster, like the cow, and what was sort of the purpose and how did you, within quotes, repurpose it? Um, to convey the meaning that you wanted. Yeah, uh, I I really don't think the BBC is capable of that because yeah. because mostly, I mean that is kind of parachute journalism, which they will never never kind of you know accede to. For me, it's not so much about post-colonial experience or trying to depict that. For me, this is about the longing for a pure bucolic past, which is playing out in the politics of India today, and people's desire in a global context where they can go work at a multinational. But in the morning, it's very important to touch the cow and give it some grass that doesn't grow in the city. Uh, so it's, it, it has nothing to do really with clear, it's much simpler. It's really, oh my God, this is really who I am. But by the way, I don't belong there anymore. It's about that duality, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I can see that. Uh, do you think that a uh, class perspective also, because you, the, the subjects um, of, of that piece seem to be very kind of anchored in, um, how do I say it, um, the lower middle class? and the lower class in Mumbai? And do you think that you are, you are divorced from that class subjectivity? And perhaps that's why you see the bucolic or want to see the bucolic in that? 
or no, something? I, I, I think of very famous alcohol purveyor who escaped India is in the film too. Uh, who, uh, who, who goes to the race course and enjoys the race course and some. So no, I, it, it, it's it's just the way I remember the city. It, it, it has and people I come across at the street level. Uh, it, it, it is not something you know agenda driven that I'm going to see these particular people and so on and so forth. I just happened to go to yes, I did go to places that I wanted to go to, but uh, uh, this has not, this was not like you know orchestrated in that particular way. Mm -hmm. So at the street level, you see the people that you see, I think, on the, in, in the film. And to meet Mr. Malia, I did go to the uh, uh, horse uh, races. I didn't expect to meet him, but I did. And uh, so that's what you see. So no, there wasn't an agenda to do one thing or the other. Yeah. Okay, so um, so what? Uh, so just one last thing. I know that I'm. <laughs> I don't want to spend all of the time on the one shot, but I was just curious. Like <clears throat> two practitioners of documentary, two documentarians. Like, what was your process like? How did you how did you film film these? How did you decide on the location? Um, like these would be the spaces where I would I would go to observe um, what city life is like or what globalization in this moment and the contrast look like for me in this city. No, all the globalization stuff is in post production. Um, my motivation was very simple: mm -hmm. that I would go there and spend about ten days in Mumbai and go to various places for and document what I saw. And I did shoot afterwards as well. Uh, after as a as a B sequence, the Malia sequence was shot as a B. Uh, saying that, you know, these people, I, I never really saw these people on the street level. Uh, where can I go? And I thought the race course would be the best place to go to see them. I mean, I don't want to get into the story of being able to get into the race course, but that's a fairly fascinating story. Uh, I, I don't think I had a globalization idea. I was more interested in seeing whether the definition of the UN driven poverty holds. That's all. Mm -hmm. All these other things come as a result of that. As you can see, the film is driven primarily by an observational aesthetic. So in America, we call it gun and run. Uh, it is it, it it is shot as a gun and run film. So the guy who takes his sandals and tries to hit the hit the bus driver, I didn't make it up. It happened, and Ed Talavera, who shot it, happens to be an extremely good cameraman, and he got it. That's what he what he got. And 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 it's it's there in the film. So it's it's driven primarily by that. You know, let's go to Bombay and let's see. In, in in Sao Paulo, actually, it's a little bit different because it was more like let's go to Sao Paulo and look at the intermodal race. So that was more specific to look at transport and mobility in the city. This one was much more about poverty and human beings so that's what we wanted to focus on and that's what uh, th that this is the result that's great so i think that the three films go very well together because it moves from a very general state of being as in your observational documentary like life man in the city to very specific bengali 
middle class that is gendered and in um, Abhishek's case, very kind of classed and heteronormative. And from that perspective, I thought that Audacity was a brilliant short because it brought together like, there's so many nuances that come across in that shot, we brought together teen rebellion, a typical Bengali milieu, patriarchy, globalization, all of these like are conveyed in a very tight and entertaining narrative. So, um, <clears throat> so I want to ask you, and, and uh, let's see, uh, after Ban goes over it, I will play the end of the clip, but uh, Anirban, tell us about your process and what gave you this idea. And I also want you to talk about this very nuanced Bengali middle-class milieu that comes through. So how did you conceptualize that? Because um, I just feel it's a very kind of brilliant achievement to be able to do all of that in a short and still give us sort of a fun narrative closure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very kind words. How the story came about, it's uh, honestly the very first kernels of the story happened when I was applying to NYU. And they wanted you to write stories, short stories over a bunch of subjects. Most of them were pretty, you know, my life's journey or a trip with your grandmother, or something cinematic. And they had one subject called the door. And me being, I guess, the weird guy I am, I chose that. And I wrote a kind of a weird, very intellectual story about a door and about a father and a daughter not getting along. So that was the original birth of the story. Uh, didn't get into NYU. That's why I ended up in, at USC. Uh, <laughs> but that's a side story. Um, and uh, You make it sound like a bad outcome. What the hell? <laughs> uh, truth is, NYU didn't give me any money to study. USC did. So that's why I came there. <laughs> uh, anyway, so... Go, going back to the story, I mean, yeah, the film, looking back, it's derived from my childhood because I grew up in a very, let's, let me not use terrible words, adjectives here, but it was a repressive family and very violent family. Um, and so many of these patriarchy and the rebellion, uh, not exactly that, because I'm not a girl, I'm a guy, well, I'm a boy. So, but a lot of the inspiration was kind of natural. It came quite naturally. I didn't have to think too hard for it. Uh, like the card game. I've seen so many card games at my home. Uh, drinking, um, you know, these things I knew very naturally. Uh, but eventually what happened was I ended up, actually, we had three locations chosen and one after the other, they kept on falling because it was election season and it was too noisy in some place or some, some other problems. I ended up shooting in the house of that's part owned by the one of the producers of the film, the main producer of the film. And that happened to be just a block away from the house I grew up in. So it was kind of, <laughs> we didn't plan it, it just happened. And we shot it. And as far as the shooting is concerned, it was kind of sc scary because it was a three day shoot. And of which uh, the second day, half of it got rained out and we were shooting sync sound. So we couldn't shoot. It was pouring cats and dogs. So I, the sound was no good. And so, I had a bunch of the film to shoot in the last day. And I think the only reason I succeeded was I have a pretty solid training as a documentary filmmaker. So my storyboards and everything went out of the window. I knew I could never reach uh, the end of the film if I shot it like I had planned to. And I was shooting and the camera uh, the camera person was also very, you know, he got it. 
and he went to shoulder health camera. And we were improvising uh, as we were going along. And fortunately, you know, being an editor, I knew continuity issues pretty well. It was mapped inside my head. So fortunately, we didn't have any blunders. Um, and we managed to, the last shot of the film just happened to be the last shot we shot. And it also happened to be the shot in which our last roll rolled out on. We didn't have another roll <laughs> to film, even if we wanted to at that point. So it was very dramatic uh, shot Barn. before the elections. Yeah, Barn, uh, yeah. Abhishek is wondering what a roll is. Oh, uh, roll is... Uh, <laughs> His jokes. You know, <laughs> joke. it, was it was shot in a super 16 uh, millimeter uh, print film. And uh, yeah, we shot, everybody thought we were crazy to do that in the digital age, but uh, we had been stupid before. So we continued being stupid and we shot this thing in super 16. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> That's about it. So um, it happens to be the shot that I actually <laughs> wanted to show because all of all of the drama, the high drama sort of comes together where, you know, the neighbors being overly caring <laughs> and you'll be, all of... You will be giving out the end of the film though if you do that, but... Uh, yeah, they're supposed to have, they're supposed to have watched it. Oh, okay. Yeah. When they, uh, and our discussion will come later, but... Um, Yes, so let me let me show the end, which which I particularly like. Ooh, <laughs> Hey, <laughs> So, um, yeah, um, this, this is, um, having been a film festival programmer in my past life, I have to say, I haven't seen like such a well-executed short in a long time. <laughs> yeah. All right. So moving on uh, to Abhishek. Um, so uh, for you, I mean, I think the first question that I had was why did you pick, and your intro sort of answered it, but why did you pick animation as the medium for the message that you wanted to convey in this film? Uh, generally, uh, in, uh, in my uh, uh, design school in uh, IIT, IDC, I have been trained as a traditional 2D hand-drawn animator. So whatever the films uh, we were making as a project film or maybe after the college, everything was hand-drawn means for any film we have to at least make like four or 5,000 drawings. So, uh, um, and in order to understand any craft, you have to at least like make more than two, three, four films in order to know how the hand on animation work, how the frame works. And the important part that uh, we have to become an actor because uh, animation works like that. If you execute a certain scene, uh, 
you and it's a happy scene you have to be happy though you are not happy so there are methods because if you are not happy the uh, the characters will come out very sad though it's a happy scene so such things uh, emotionally translating that into the uh, into the film uh, that was that that's a simple process but because i'm a trained animator i chose to go ahead with that uh, medium another nobody has seen such kind of uh, we call it like a animation for adult generally all the animation that was made that's made in india currently all are like for the small kids and even when you go to any government body even we went to the censor board and they say ki cartoon bana ke laya hai that he is making cartoons but it is actually not a cartoon you know it's a actually a important thing what i wanted to convey about a human being so th- that's why uh, i thought of if i make such a um, uh, different film in animation it will it will become much more like people will be very curious ki why why you have chosen maybe you can call it cartoon or a animation to convey a very serious kind of a uh, subject because animation you might have seen there's lot of like people are jumping around people are hopping into the table and they are climbing into the ceiling fan such things are not happening it's a very normal to, it and it's it's made in 12 fps it's not made in 24 fps so things are moving very slowly in its own pace so all these things are i didn't think of this but yeah slightly yeah so your film is called fish curry and um, <clears throat> the characters in your story are not bengali right and so i was just curious and this is just out of curiosity does fish curry carry a deeper symbolic meaning for you um and anything for the story yeah uh, it, it's it's very uh, simple uh, i have been uh, grown in a family uh, who, who is not a bengali family but uh, i have been uh, grown around bengali family like my mother used to teach in a bengali school bengali english school so i know everything that when i whenever and they don't eat non veg but i am allowed to do that that i can eat anywhere so whenever i go to their friends house they used to offer me uh, macher jhol and chicken and all so uh, they have never restricted me so my mom is a very fluent bengali speaker she knows bengali very well and lot of time when you meet her also you'll confuse that okay are you a bengali though i don't know because it's a very different thing so somehow uh talking to their friends going to their family and in 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 small cities you go for a tuition classes because for learning some english or some mathematics so i used to go into that bengali family again they used to teach me so i know how the whole household look like how the people are everything how the food food palate is uh so and the whole, all the places where i have lived and studies uh, i i have been uh, into that uh, bengali family so i know the importance of food i important the importance of fish rice everything so that's why and it's my one of the soul food you know nothing is better than that it's the best food so uh, and why i chose the food or something i just quickly say i have made one other version of the film when i was in in college and uh, it was a it was a love story between two, two like two men but when i took that uh, uh, film to festivals because i have been earlier into festival in in zagreb and annecy so the jury is like quite i know them uh, who selects the film they have become friends so i just casually shown them that can you do you want to see one more shot and they say what are you showing me there is no culture because it has no food nothing like people were waiting for each other and he, then they then they all then they suggested that you are coming from a place where 
we love bollywood we love songs we love spices we love food we we, we would be much more happier to see your culture how a culture is being the part of your narrative and i came back and i thought why not what is my culture and that was the biggest question because when you move to any city you are into that fast paced thing and everything becomes very fabricated plastic so then i came back okay this is this is what i like this is what the food should be and why not food become a narrative why not a radio become a guiding uh, behind everything so everything came in came together whatever my childhood was and yeah i think mean, that that's great and um so so then my next question was actually about sound design i liked your sound design in in your short that when you use the fly buzzing for at moments of discomfort and then you have this scene from kalya in the barber shop that i was very curious about um ja kare ho the line wahi se shuru hoti hai so i mean i i what was sort of like what were as you were thinking about your sound design and this idea of conveying kind of a cultural milieu through use of particularly bollywood songs which i should say are brilliantly executed for those that know bollywood to get the meaning that you're trying to convey in those things so so can you like explain your process your thinking behind your sound design um yes um, um the first uh, when uh, i started writing the film and uh, visualizing the film uh i was thinking about a place the place which is much more local much more local and i think it will be very difficult to you to understand that uh, the character in the film used to go to the barber shop the people go to saloons like a bigger bigger like a very posh saloon but the whole agenda was that they were living in uh, a place called a malviya nagar where these are like small small saloon i want to place everything in delhi uh, the same thing that uh, sanjay leela bhansali makes a film in hindi but it's a uh, it's placed on whole bengali family and he is a bengali so i also don't i don't have a control on the language but still i have that privilege that i can tell a story in hindi without being a bengali uh, of a bengali boy okay so uh, they were living in that place so the most important thing was uh, how, how that story will uh, uh, how the story will be placed in which part of the city how crowded it will be how local it will be so that that became one of the ins- inspiration that we will not be using any kind of background music you know like because in film in bollywood film whenever we have to run a narrative we just play one loop you know and that becomes very very bad so i thought of why not to um, take inspiration what is happening around me and when you go in delhi they will be playing this old old what you call g cinema and you will be seeing all those films and in between there uh, they are cutting your hair and they'll stop it they'll stop some important scene everyone will be like looking at the television and along with them also you are also looking at them this is the this is the part and i think uh, the, again the culture what are small small nuances that happen every day like uh, so that's why i took and why i took a barber because when i was doing the research about uh, how two men uh, love they told me that we do care lot about each other's grooming we do care how they look when they go outside and somehow we have to bring that narrative because only you will see only one character so how that other part comes into the picture where each of them care about each other the how they look when they go outside their house so such thing came when i was talking to people when i was do, uh, taking interviews so that was one of the process bollywood songs because i i i love writing songs though in the later part when we sold the film we have to change the uh, songs because of the copyright issues but 
it it will sound very similar we recorded and created everything in a very similar structure but obviously the song is very catchy uh, people remember it so it becomes a part of the narrative the part of the radio very easy and very seamless and and when the film ends you end up singing uh, the the song so i don't know i can't ignore that it's a very integral part yeah. i'll i'll keep to even in the short film no definitely it makes sense i mean it does convey the cultural nuance but my my curiosity like why bachchan why that scene from kalia was that just a quirk or it means you are you are thinking that let's go and do some sketching because we have to do some sketching when you go out and you go into the barber shop and you you see that okay they are playing the playing a very important scene and same kalia was running there you know i said oh and it it uh, like it's a coincidence lot of things you you, you can't control and it happened like uh, magic and it worked yeah so uh, yeah. that that you have to draw each and everything and then plan it in the board yeah yeah way it works it really works it worked for me so one one last thing and maybe we can end there so why did you um kind of decide to leave your film sort of open ended you say it um in the love for the mother jol and that it's carried on to the mother now uh that you see the message is is sort of resonating with has resonated with the father we might conclude but uh but you still leave it open ended was was that like yeah. a, why why that choice yeah. see the the first reason in the in the middle class household is like well, the deci- decisions are taken collectively like whether it's a marriage or whether it's buying a fridge anything it has to be come through both mother and father when agar if it doesn't happen there will be a fight there will be unnecessary fight so that was there that and they both know each other they both are old and they care about each other so one of the reason that he was trying to say ki ha aisa kuch hua hai what do you think and all the first point was that the second point uh, um, when someone comes out it's a very big thing people don't know what is homosexuality the first thing if i tell my parents homosexuality they, they maybe they will google or they will because they know how to use internet now they can google and read about it watch lot of videos about that but the same thing would have happened there also right if he if lalit have come out to his father how immediately he will be uh, understanding the whole concept that a two two boy can love each other they can they can live together and this is a very out of place concept in his head so it might be like ki ha whatever he has done he has decided because he has already seen the photographs and everything of his partner you might have seen in the film in the non coherent wall that we created uh, different different picture and one picture was then he uh, invites he where is your partner i have i haven't seen but he was looking at his photo and uh, he was just taking time for himself like he will be going and doing research googling and uh, asking to his uh, colleagues ki aisa kuch hota hai kya is this possible and so th- that's why any kind of acceptance is not prompt otherwise you would have slapped him very easily slapped him do something like in general that it, nothing happens he went and he took time and it's very important for an acceptance people should be given time to calm down and he took his own sweet time and he might have accepted that so that was the reason because i, I was nowhere to give a decision ki ha usko chappal se maar de and all those things and or say ki okay very nice so that's why and short film you can't give a time <laughs> so yeah all right okay well thank you to all three of our wonderful filmmakers thank you for joining me here today it was lovely to connect with you guys thank you 